How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing wonderful, man. Thank you for asking. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. It's uh, 10.39 a.m. right here in San Francisco. What about over there? Uh, right. It's, uh, it's al almost like 8 p.m. Yeah, it's yeah. dark now. Are you, an, are you a night owl? Uh, well, usually I am, but I've been trying to fix it, actually, because I do like the mornings. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's too easy to kind of fall into that, like, night rhythm, you know, when you, mm. need, when you go to bed at, like, 6 a.m. I've done it for, like, <laughs> 20 years, 25 years now, <laughs> and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I want to wake up like a normal person. Yeah, I feel it. I don't know. It's just the the mornings are so much more uh, peaceful. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certain aspects, of course, in the night, but I'm kind of over it, man. I'm yeah, no, I sent you the message, like, uh, following up with the interview, and uh, I was working, and then uh, you responded instantly, and I checked what time it was, like, your time. It was, like, 3 a.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm definitely still on, on it, you know, I'm, I'm still working on it, but. Next time, man. It would be a next time. Uh, it's your life. Uh, it was just funny. I was like, dang, is it really true? <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for uh, hopping on Zoom. We'll start it kind of chronologically. Where did you uh, get your start in music? It's really hard to pinpoint the uh, like, exact thing that got me started in music. I mean, I have the classic story of my dad being a record collector. So we always had music playing in the house. And my brother played in like hardcore bands, so that that was like my first like uh, input into music of like, you know, my dad listening to records and going to see my uh, brother's shows since I was like seven, eight years old. And yeah, from that point on, I definitely was, I want to start a band, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, play hardcore music. But yeah, uh, that didn't really happen ever. Because, you know, it was super hard. You know, all my friends never heard of hardcore. I did not know how to find a scene for it or anything. So it always was like a pipe dream of mine, you know, sorry, I'm banned. But I was mad into like nerd shit always, you know, like on my computer. And, you know, when I was like 14, 15, it just came natural to me that, oh man, I actually don't need like a band and stuff. I can make music on my computer, and that was just like when I found out, you know, these producer cats, you know, DJ Premier and Flying Lotus, Ninja Blitz, J Deal, you know, all these cats, Madlib, and I was like, oh my god, these guys are just like one dude, and they're creating all these amazing sounds. And yeah, <laughs> that that was kind of started with, you know, that you can be independent, make music, <laughs> mm -hmm. don't need a band, because I always had that traditional view on it before this music and so open my eyes. What was the uh, DAW that you used when you uh, first started in music? I think the first was Afro Studio and I never actually learned how to use it. Then I got like a machine micro for like super cheap and I started using the machine software uh, and I used that for like a year or two. Then I found Ableton and that it just kind of like blew me away and that's what i've been using ever mm. since you know? so on your first album was that during your like fl studio era or was that during your ableton era hard to say man because you know a lot of the music from the first album is kind of like scattered like some of that stuff is like my like <laughs> first beats and stuff mm. but i think it's mostly like yeah ableton and also I got into hardware, so, you know, it's just like, uh, I like using the SP404. You know, of course, Ableton is the main one. That's what I use most of the time. But, you know, I always try to experiment with my phone, with a four track, you know, with hardware samplers, with an aux track. You know, uh, lately I've been, like, all I've been over is, like, electron stuff, you know, the aux track, the machine trump, the cycles. And that's why all, all I've been using. So, yeah, even though Ableton is always what I return to, I like to, you know, experiment and see what I can do with other stuff. Mm. 
like I think I have like yeah I have the electron stuff then I have the mononome and the air rack and that's like guys I think uh, these days I have to follow Sophie of like if you don't use it like why have it like I don't understand people like collecting stuff and like they're just collecting dust you know like I rather like actually know the gear that I'm using and utilizing it and being like like if someone asks me like why do you have that I'm like Cause I love this, like I can like show how I use it and stuff. Cause you know it's easy to get lost in that gear, you know. You know you can spice up the pot too much, you know. But mm-hmm. sometimes all you need is like salt and paper. <laughs> yeah. Little cooking. What was the uh, like the equipment they used during your habits album? That was actually a lot of the Euro rack, you know, cause it has like these ruches, like badges and stuff. I used a lot of Euro rack on that. And it's just Ableton, you know, the granulator since uh, Max 8. I recently got, I, I got into Max 8 during Habits and, you know, how that works. <laughs> that's, you know, that's like kind of the forefront I got into like IDM. What was the equipment that you used back on your first album? Well, I remember that was just uh, like Ableton and SP404, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I I didn't have any money back then, you know, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have any extra money to spend on equipment. And I think that was pretty, super cool because, you know, I think I just used what I got. And it, um, of course, it was me on music, you know, I, I mean, I was a sampling, so all I really needed was a sampler and Ableton to like mix it and like master it. You know, that's all you needed. <laughs> yeah. When, when you first released your first album, what was like the, I guess, like the lo-fi hip hop beat scene? in 2015-16 before like you and like the rest of the kind of the wave uh came on the scene well I, I, it's it's super weird because I, I don't think we really had a name for it. it was just like beat music and we had a community around it on soundcloud you know i i got into like the beat scene pretty late before you know it popped off because it's been going on for like <laughs> 20 years like myspace days Mm-hmm. so yeah it was definitely was just more of a community of friends and you know other producers and we were like sharing samples and sounds like oh shit listen to this why is this made and i don't think anyone outside of that <laughs> circle like really care for that music because we're like oh what, what there's no vocals on this it's kind of boring like i don't care about this when i released harbor that was like when it started like kind of leaking into like mainstream or just like people who we n- never heard of like soundcloud yeah you know it, it started leaking more on like other like music social platforms like you know wine and uh, youtube and spotify and stuff mm-hmm. like that when did you like start to like realize that your project started to get like viral i think it's like when i started like actually getting like decent enough money out of it I can like you know <laughs> pay my rent. Mm-hmm. That's about it. And it's just like I don't know. It's just happened like super naturally because I was doing like the wine stuff, and it was just stuff that I liked doing. There was no like reason behind it to market music or anything like that. I just enjoyed the community around it. And because I didn't really like, I didn't have a Snapchat. I didn't like using. I didn't like Instagram. So wine was something I liked. So Vine, but that's... wasn't Vine like a seven second platform? Yeah, but that's perfect for being music, you know? So, <laughs> but, you know, it's loop based, so you can like yeah. make these super cool like videos for it. And I have no like, idea about this. Horror. Yeah, there was a huge, you know, beat community going on online. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, because, you know, I think that's why I most appreciate it. Well, you know, the beat community was always, you know, uh, it's always do it yourself. You know, people like make the music, they make the visuals, they put up the shows. It's very really like uh, the stuff I grew around with, you know, like punk music, you know, you got to do everything by yourself because no one else cares. No one else cares about you. <laughs> so you got to just put it on yourself. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was just like the extension of SoundCloud, you know, putting the visual front on the music. So yeah, it was the perfect platform for it. So yeah, I started getting the high from wine, and then like one of digital hit me up like, "Oh, you wanna like uh, put this?" Uh... Well, actually, our first released an EP that was pressed on cassette, 
by this like <laughs> young dude in like Seattle or something. And he made like 50 copies of the tape. Then it got interest by the label Vinyl Chisel. And they were like, oh, like we want to like make an album with you, like vinyl. And then, you know, I just gathered all my beats I wanted that I could fit on one disc from my hard drive. And that was like what, 45 beats. I don't remember even. And so and yeah, it was the... like the perfect timing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, is, there is only like one press of that, uh, the Harbor vinyl, right? Right, yeah, yeah, we only did, yeah, the 300 copies, I think. I know that yeah, people, people like pester you online all the time yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I get it, but I, I collect records myself. I, you know, I love records, but it's always, I don't know. Right now, I'm getting kind of over it, you know, like pressing my own records. It's just like build on this plastic trash machine mm-hmm. of like putting more records out there. You know, the music is online. You can listen to it. That's all you need. I'm just not into like feeding to any like, I don't know. It's a super confused area. Like, of course, you know, I want people to be happy, but at the same time, I don't want to bother with it. <laughs> and like, um, like I said before, you know, I'm like actually like putting the Tomba B stuff on a hold and like moving on. And yeah, yeah that's that will probably be to like blast of it. You know, there will be 300 copies. I actually had 50 copies of my own. And I went to Serbia and Australia for my first shows. And I just gave them to like people who actually came to shows because, of course, I wasn't like popular then. Mm-hmm. So, you know, say that one popular now, but it was like, you know, five, 10, 20 people came to the shows. And I was like, people who uh, stayed and talked around, I was like, oh, he's a copy of Harbor, man. And I'm like, I hope that they actually keep them. And I'm also like bummed out because I missed out on so much money. Because I could be like, oh, really? hustling them on the donkey, you know, getting more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have. And yeah, I, I gave my last copies away for the charity thing. I, yeah, I, I, like, I, I saw that. So you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. This was- you're doing really good stuff with like what you have left in your Tomba Beats like physical collection. So, uh, personally, how much more stuff do you like merch? Do you have like vinyl cassette wise of your Tomba Beat stuff? Like, like one Harper record to like the test presses. Then like, yeah, I, I got like a couple uh, more copies of the new album that I'm just going to give to my friends and stuff. You know, I don't like having extra stuff. You know, I hate mm-hmm. stuff. I hate having extra like log it's around so i just rather get rid of it and not like bother with like you know selling it or anything yeah 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 dang but, so once those are know, gone I, like it's out there yeah they're gone like but yeah if i still had the 50 copies that would be like my retirement plan or something but, no really yeah they uh you printed such like a little amount and they've like accrued such like a huge cult following online yeah, actually, I think I, like, asked them, like, when the first, like, batch showed out, like, uh, from the label, I were like, oh, sh-. like, those sold really good, so we, like, make us, uh, like, a second pricing, and they were like, like, no, no, we shouldn't, or something like I, They never really gave me a reason, but after that, I was like, all oh, right, we, we're not making a second pricing. It's just, like... I don't know. There's no like special reason for it. I just don't want to bother with it anymore. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go back to it. You know, the times has passed. I can just hope that you know, the people who bought it keep it and enjoy it. You know, cherish it now and not mm. like trying to scalp people. But like I said, the music is online. Go bootleg it. You know, make your own tapes and stuff. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> the music uh, is there. That's the most important part. <laughs> What is the reasoning for retiring your Tomba Beats project? Oh man, there's lots of reason, honestly. I think the the most is it just bothers me that I don't really feel like I have the cultural control of my own moniker. Uh, you know, because I'm really bad at social media stuff. I never liked it. I've never been good at it. 
So I've kind of always lost control of it. Like if you look up like my name on the Google or whatever, you find like videos that I haven't made that I haven't like <laughs> given permission to, you know, and there's like a bunch of it. So I can like uh, control, like, I feel like every time I mention my name, I have to explain myself like what I am, you know, and, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. I, I want to have the creative control over my own stuff and mm -hmm. not it be spread around that it has, you know, and I don't mind it, you know, it's cool. It's cool that it has this like crazy ass footprint on the internet and it should, you know, music should be shared like that. But I feel like it's been so long, man. <laughs> I started that name when I was 15, I just turned 25. It's been 10 years when I've had that name. And it, it, it upholds so much memories, you know, good and bad, because, you know, some of those records were made in a really bad mindset. And I really don't want to talk about it anymore. You know, I don't want to talk about Harbor or, or Arcade, because, you know, I was a in a really bad place, you know, I was a kid. And I just don't want to, yeah, go back to that. I kind of just want to turn on a new page, you know, like whole chapter. And the music is getting different too, so I don't want to <laughs> freak people out or have the discussion of oh, like, you know, the old stuff, the new stuff, blah, 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 whatever. It's just a new name, man. It's just a new me. It's me. It's always been me, but I think it's always been separate <laughs> and I don't want it to be. I want it to be me. It's a weird thing. I've, I've been like thinking about it for ages now, ages. But now I canceled my tours and everything. And uh, as I said, like, you know, I'm just going to do it. And it's been amazing, you know. I I think I'm going to be happy about it. And people who follow, you know, I can be only as grateful as I can be. So from your first project, Harbor, to your most recent project, like, there was a, a huge time jump, like, almost 10 years. Um, we don't need to get into, like, the thick of it, but... Um, I guess musically, like what what happened in between those two? Like like what influences do you take in? I guess what what things like pushed you to change sound? Because those are two way different albums. Yeah, and the <laughs> the new stuff is more different from habits as well. I don't know. I was just life, man. I mean, I'm I'm just a different person that I was when I was 15, 17. I guess I could like get in the deep of it, but honestly, it's just like growth and you know, things change, things happen, the good and the bad, <laughs> and you become the person out of those experiences. In your recent like music, I noticed like a ton of uh, inspirations like with like juke music, jungle music, IDM, like what uh, what artists have you been listening to recently? It kind of goes back to you when I uh, first played that show in Serbia when I was like 18, 19. Shout out to Hidden BG Collective for getting me on. That was my first show, you know, as a film. Um, and yeah, that's where I got into like uh, dance music. And my brother also like runs underground raves in Helsinki, and you know the underground underground uh, music scene is really good in Helsinki. So uh, I started DJing those parties. At first, it was like house and soul music, and then I just got into the faster and the faster stuff. You know, DJ Rosad and you know all those deck life cats and machine from uh, the brain dance music that's kind of like inspiring me a lot lately like Derek Boo and Bogdan Rakunski and of course like FX Twin all those like warp cats yeah and I think that's just like where I'm going lately you know making like brain dance or <laughs> it's always like how do you explain it I don't know but like full work you know mm. it's just like what feels like the most natural to me and I just been banging out full four tracks uh, left and right, and it's just it's crazy to be on this routine again. You know, like making a, a track like once a day that feels like, oh man, I want to release this. Also, that's the reason I want to go. You know, we don't need money go. I want to go independent because be on a label and stuff. You gotta wait around. You know, <laughs> you send him an album and then you like wait like seven months. Like, oh man, you know if album is finished i want to put it out there and you know i don't think i have to wait around anymore you know i want to do that mm -hmm. so 
yeah, that's another big reason why I'm taking on a new moniker is uh, just going independent and just kind of taking care of everything again. So are you going to just do it like uh, under your own just personal name or are you going to have like a whole other alias? Like, what are you uh, thinking? Uh, there's going to be a new alias thing, but nothing is, is set on stone. I've been kind of messing around with one of them, but yeah, I think I'm going to get more into it when <laughs> the album is finished and hopefully it's going to be finished this month. I'm actually in Berlin right now, staying at my girlfriend's and I'm basically just getting records and, you know, making this album. And yeah, I think when the record is done, I'm going to like announce like, <laughs> all right, this is the name, you know, like new album. Awesome. <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. And then from there, you're going to try to tour and everything like that. I don't know about touring yet because I'm not a very much good tourer, you, you say, because I got right now I'm focusing on therapy and getting my like mental health in check. So touring is not currently like the main thing. Mm. I just kind of want to like focus on like my life and, you know, making the music and just like putting it out there and kind of skipping over all that other push. I can't really. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's that's really good that you're uh, like in tune with your emotions. Yeah, it took a long time, man. It took a long time not to be like messed around because, you know, that rise in like popularity and like 18 and 19, and when you're already confused and that comes in your life, that like messes you up. You know, I was like super lost for ages. I did not know who I was or, you know. It's super confusing, but right now I start starting to feel again, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like that's uh, beautiful. Like, I like that. Place, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful, and I like how you're pushing therapy. I feel like therapy has such like a negative connotation. I'd, yeah, I started I mean, going to it, therapy this year, and I just best thing in my life. That's awesome to hear, man. It's definitely a, a, a struggle and a process of like finding the right therapist and like. You know, and when when the therapy actually starts, that's when the bullshit starts because you actually got to, like, you know, meet the stuff that you've been running away from. And, yeah, it's hard, but it's definitely worth it. And, you know, I can only, like, give all the love to people struggling out there, you know, with their mental and stuff. But, yeah, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. It's just music and therapy. And- Completely different side of a, of a question. I know that you're very prevalent within the emo scene. Uh, mm. Like a ton of my like favorite emo bands, I see you follow on Instagram. Like your arms are my cocoon, brave little abacus. <laughs> What's your like favorite like emo bands and uh, records? A lot of people don't know the side of Tomba Beats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I try to sneak in. You know, I I love sharing music with people, and I've gotten like a couple people like hitting me up, like like oh man, like you got me into like emo violence and stuff and that's awesome man like i love like sharing music with people i don't know man it's of course you know right with Apaskis, you know their two full lengths are amazing and you know <clears throat> your arms are uh like a cool the eb uh they did last year was one of the best releases that year you know, I, I love the faster and harsher side of them. Like, I, I love for Ivor of Haikus. Oh, and, that one's um, really good. They're actually from yeah, uh, the San Francisco area. Like, yeah, wow. yeah. And the craziest thing, one of the guys who plays guitar in the band he hit me up on Instagram. He's, like, a huge, like, he loves, like, beat music. What? And, like, yeah, I was, like, geek, you know. I was, like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> I was trying to track yeah, them yeah. down for an interview. Oh, oh man. man, dude, I, dude, no, I, I think he would be cool with it. He, he's in, he just became a dad and stuff, but he's mm. the coolest dude. It's just like loud speed music and just kind of all kinds of music, you know. And you know, of course, like my friends' bands, like Moshi Moshi and Alas, you know, like Phoenix Cremo. <clears throat> I don't know, man. It, it's a deep like way to and Dietro, you know. It's just like European scrams. I love a lot, you know, from the French and Italy. And yeah, I don't know. It's a deep hole. <laughs> I, I'm sad. I kind of deleted a lot of my tweets, and I had like huge like Cremo thread, you know, of me like sharing my favorite stuff. 
But I'm always down to geek out with people, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. You, know, like, you got to post a playlist. I guess I should make a playlist. But, you know, I think there's a lot of great communities out there, you know, people sharing it and stuff. I think that's the great thing about, like, Screamo and stuff that is still great niche. But you can find, like, people, like, just being, like, psyched to share it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. the communities around the internet and stuff. You know, Sophie's full of bros, man. That's why I used... That's where I got into like a bunch of music and my friend James from Australia like put me on. But yeah, just go on the show of these floorboards and like download yourself some screamo, man. That's all you need. Yeah, that's that really was like the uh, that I feel like Sophie's floorboard made like scrams kind of popular again. That mm. and then it's like uh 2010s like YouTube probably yeah. and like the whole like midwest emo uh playlist era of youtube yeah no i think that was like my first introduction of the screamo was like the merch midwest stuff like my head in the clouds and like midwest pen pals and bro i actually have an interview with midwest pen pals the the drummer of the band oh really that's yeah. awesome he's the craziest dude but yeah no he's definitely like YouTube <laughs> algorithm is putting you on a lot of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, man, love that stuff. You know, it's it's something I it's it's like some some kind of music that I want to make, but I don't know any idea how. So I don't want to even like get into. I just love listening to. It. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just been a great emotion support. You know, <laughs> over the years, you know, I love that kind of music. I saw that like. A long time ago, it's like coming back to me. You had a guitar, right? Like that bright blue guitar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done an electro, I think. Do you still have that? Yeah, I have it at my studio. Actually, I, I yeah, I got it from uh, this this full ass Sleepy Dog. What? You got it from Sleepy Dog? No, I didn't get it from Sleepy Dog, but I saw him playing that. I was uh, like, oh, that costs like three hundred euros. I'm gonna get that. Mm. <laughs> No, it's oh, a yeah, beautiful cool. guitar. It's a good guitar. The pickups are like way too high for me. So I got also a Telecaster, you know, like an old Telecaster 85 or whatever. And I love that guitar, man. Like, you know, I, I love like finger picking, you know, I love the like bluegrass stuff, you know. But I think right now that's like more personal music to me, you know. Mm-hmm. I love to play for myself, you know, all the like blues classics and stuff. And it's definitely not ready for the world. And I don't know if I ever want to share that stuff. And I think that's all right. All right. Last question. What's like a weird like fan experience? I guess the only time was when I was playing LA first time. And somebody wanted to shake my hand when I was taking a piss in the <laughs> urinal. And yeah, I was just, yeah, I don't want to touch your hand. Where my Yeah. I saw that was that the interview. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that thank God has been the only like weird experience kind of with fans or whatever. But everyone has been like always super cool, you know. So <laughs> I read that in their interview and I was like, oh, I need to ask about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that was super weird. But I think it was just like a uh, bad timing. Like I don't know. But we we talked afterwards and he was super cool, dude. So you know, all off to him. You know, I, it was just more fun. Like, funny i guess yeah. you know <laughs> that was a very awkward place for someone to ask for a handshake yeah <laughs> <I know. laughs> all right well um i'm gonna let you go on with your day today uh yeah thank you for hopping on zoom i really appreciate it no worry thank you for the super lovely injury man mm-hmm. super awesome. of course yeah um yeah thank you i appreciate it i hope you have a beautiful night tonight All right, man. Take it easy, man. Godspeed. You too. Wow. What a great interview. The Brave Little Abacus interview is up next. See you soon.